helping your new driver. Module 3, Communicating. This session is designed to enable drivers to communicate with and better understand the messages sent by others, the environment, and traffic situations. It presents specific examples for improving driver communication and illustrates four concepts of communication used in driving. They are, one, how others communicate, two, how road signs, signals, and markings communicate, three, how you can communicate when stopped on the highway, and four, how to communicate with others through the use of horn, signal lights, and hand signals. Segment one, how others communicate. Segment one presents information on how others communicate their intended actions through the use of horn, lights, vehicle position and movement, and personal behavior. Yeah, I'm out here on 80 and uh, trying to figure out how to get to a trailer court out here by the John Deere plant on 2nd Avenue. Could I get some information on that? He's on north to get to John Deere. You all have a nice day now. The highway would be a lot safer place if we could all communicate with one another by radio. We could tell other drivers just what it was we planned to do, and they could adjust as necessary. That way there'd be fewer surprises and a lot fewer people running into one another. But not all drivers have CB radios. Even if they did, they might not be listening to the right channel at the right time. But we don't really need radios to communicate. There are a number of ways by which we can tell other drivers what we plan to do. And they have ways of telling us what they are going to do. What a jerk! He pulled out without any warning at all. Did he? Let's go back. What about that brake light? Why would he apply his brakes there? Probably because he didn't want to be there. In fact, he really wanted to be back on the freeway, and he didn't come back without a warning. His brake lights were the warning. He was trying to tell us something. He could have said it more clearly, but he said it. He was communicating to anyone who could read the signs. Understanding what others are telling you is a matter of being able to read signs. These signs may come from other drivers the cars they drive, or the situation in which they find themselves. Here is a sign, a driver who can't see you. Just to get a look at you, he has to put his nose out into your lane. Here's another driver who may not see you. He could make a lane change at any time. The car could pull out from behind that van just as you start to pass it. This situation tells you there may be a driver who can't see you. There could be a car coming across the intersection from the left. You couldn't see it. The best thing is to assume that whenever there could be a car, there is one. And in that car is a driver who can't see you. Remember him? Maybe he saw you and maybe he didn't, but his brake lights told you he was planning to do something. You hope that it'll be after you've passed. You know it's hard for him to see you, so expect him to come your way at any time. There's someone else who could come your way. The presence of someone in the driver's seat is a signal that the door could open or the car could suddenly move. There's a sort of Murphy's Law about people coming your way. Where it can happen, it will happen. Whenever you come to a major choice point like this, count on sudden maneuvers. This driver should see you, but he doesn't. If this turns out to be the place he's looking for, watch for a quick left turn. Anyone who is distracted looking for street addresses may not see you. Talk about distracted. They could walk into the side of your car without seeing you. She's got something else on her mind, too. Don't expect her to stop just because you're here. Kids always seem to have something else on their minds. Anytime there's a small child at the side of the road, it's a sign of possible trouble. What's the safest thing to do here? Establish eye contact? Give him a blast on the horn? Or swing out into the left lane?
If the driver was looking in your direction, establishing eye contact would be generally an acceptable choice. However, it doesn't fit this situation because the driver is not looking your way. The best response is to give him a blast on the horn. This communicates a hazardous situation. Swinging out into the left lane is not a good choice because it puts you seconds away from a head-on collision. Drivers often fail to use their horn to communicate and may even have to stop to think where it is located. Some drivers think it's illegal to blast the horn. Not true when it's used to reduce danger. Drivers should try to establish eye contact any time that, one, space is limited, for instance, when turning or changing lanes in rush hour traffic. Two, whenever other drivers appear uncertain. Three, any time you aren't sure other drivers understand what you're going to do. And four, in most right-of-way situations when you and others want to use the same space. Throughout the program, following each discussion slide, there will be a short quiz of one to three items covering the concept presented. The quiz is multiple choice. After the question is read, select the best answer. A discussion of the correct answers will be provided at the end of each module. One, communicating is A, sending information, B, an exchange of information, C, receiving a message, D, providing feedback. Two, drivers can receive information from A, mechanical devices, B, the actions of other highway users, C, the environment, D, all of the above. Three, Pedestrians send information by A, age and appearance, B, position, C, their actions, i.e. eye contact, hand signals, D, all of the above. Segment 2, how road signs communicate. So far, we have discussed how others communicate their intentions and actions to you. In this next segment, we will cover how road signs, signals, and markings provide drivers vital information through their color, shape, symbols, and legends. What's with him? At this time of night, it may be lack of blood in his alcohol. Don't try to pass. Even if the driver sees you, he may not be able to stay out of your lane. Weaving is one way drivers have of telling you they're drunk. They have others, like stopping at green lights, carrying on conversation with themselves, or keeping windows open in the middle of winter. You don't need to be drunk to be out of control. On that surface, he may have trouble. The driver of that oncoming car has probably seen you and has pretty good control of his car, but he doesn't have much control of the situation. Other drivers give you signs warning you of possible trouble. So does your friendly highway department. Their signs are easier to recognize. At least these are. But there are some signs that even experienced drivers occasionally mess up on. Let's see if you know all the signs. These are pretty easy. You probably know the sign in the upper left. It means that the right lane is about to disappear. The one in the upper right means there's a steep hill coming up. The one in the lower left means that the surface gets very slick when it's wet. Maybe you can't quite make out that sign at the bottom right. However, the diamond shape means it's a warning of some kind. That should be enough to put you on your toes. Here are some other signs. The one on the left, shaped like a pennant, is no passing zone. You'll find them posted on the left side of the road. How about the one that is shaped like a little house? You're right if you recognized it as a school zone. The round sign? A railroad crossing ahead. All of these signs are yellow, and yellow means caution. Red tells you when you're not supposed to do something. From left to right, these signs mean no right turn, no U-turn, and do not enter the street. 
Everyone knows the colors of traffic lights. Some drivers get a little confused, however, when they are in the form of arrows. They shouldn't. The meaning's the same. A green arrow means you can go in the direction it points. Oncoming traffic has been told to stop. A yellow arrow means you can proceed cautiously in the direction shown. There may be other cars. The red arrow means you can't go in the direction it points. This is true even though the traffic light is green. But what if the red arrow is flashing? That's the same as a red flashing traffic light. Stop and make sure the way is clear before going in the direction of the light. There are signs on the pavement, too. What do these double dashed lines mean? You can pass. You can't pass. Reversible lane. Some pavement markings are more familiar than others. Double solid yellow lines mean no passing. Double dashed lines mean reversible lanes. Such lanes change the direction of traffic flow and are used by vehicles going one way in the morning and the other way in the evening. When you see these lane markings, look for signs that tell you, one, which lane or lanes can be used, two, during what time, and three, any vehicle restrictions. To help avoid the hazard of head-on collisions, reversible lanes are marked with one, overhead signs, two, lane markings, and three, overhead lights. If the signal light hung over a lane is a green arrow or a green X, the lane is open to traffic facing the signal. If the signal is a yellow X, traffic flowing in the direction of the signal is about to end. If the yellow X is flashing, then that lane is for use by left-turning vehicles only. The lane is closed to vehicles facing a red X signal. 4. Signs with this shape and yellow in color. A. Warn drivers of dangerous conditions. B. Guide drivers to roadside services. C. Guide drivers to scenic places. D. Give notice of laws that apply. Five, signs with this shape and red in color. A, prohibit drivers from entering. B, require drivers to yield. C, warn drivers of a railroad crossing. D, warn drivers of a construction zone. Six, a red traffic arrow appearing with a green light means a. You can turn in the direction of the arrow. B. You can turn in the direction of the arrow after you stop. C. You cannot turn in the direction of the arrow. D. You either proceed straight through or turn in the direction of the arrow. Segment 3. How to communicate when stopped on the highway. The topic of the next segment concerns how to communicate the location of your vehicle when stopped alongside the highway, either during the day or at night. What signs do you have here? What about now? The cars were there before. Maybe you couldn't see them because they didn't have their lights on. Generally, cars without headlights on cannot be seen at distances greater than 2,500 feet. Now, ask yourself this. If you couldn't see them, how could they see you? If they can't see you, what's to keep the second driver from turning into the shopping center? Up to now, we've been talking about other people and what they're telling you. But communication is a two-way street. Others tell you, you tell them. One thing you can tell others is where you are. Your headlights are a way of doing this. On dark or rainy days, your car can blend into the landscape. You can see how much your lights help. With headlights on, a car can be seen from almost twice the distance, approximately 4,600 feet. 
Another time, headlights help other drivers see you as just before dark or just after sunrise. There's no magic hour. Whenever you begin to have trouble seeing others, assume they have trouble seeing you. Always make sure you use your headlights. Your parking lights are hard to see and can make it difficult for other drivers to judge how far away you are. Whenever you're stopped by the roadside, use your flashers. They help to keep other drivers from pulling off at the same spot. Parking lights are not enough. Crashes have been caused by drivers trying to follow the taillights of a parked car. Hundreds of drivers are killed every year doing this. If you can't get your car all the way off the roadway, you'll need more than flashers. You need something that warns drivers that there's trouble ahead, something that will make them slow down and give them time to avoid you when they find out you're actually in the road. Flares or a reflective triangle will usually do the trick, but not here. By the time a driver saw those flares, he'd be on top of you. People always underestimate the amount of warning that approaching drivers need. You need to put the flares back at least 200 feet behind the car. 300 feet would be even better. This gives approaching drivers plenty of time to react. If you are stopped just over a hill or around a curve, make sure the flares are far enough back that they can be seen a long way off. You need to put out some kind of a warning in the daytime, too. An approaching driver may not be looking very far ahead. It's better that he hit the warning sign than the back of your car. Where should this driver be? Where he is now? By the side of the road? In the car? Three to four hundred people are killed each year in situations similar to this. If this driver stays where he is, he may save his car by sacrificing himself. That's because he is harder to see than the car. Don't serve as a human warning. Use flares, warning triangles, or flags. They don't hurt anyone if run over. If you don't have any of these devices, the best approach is to stand off the roadway 200 to 300 feet in back of your car to give drivers advanced warning. Use any object, including a handkerchief, to warn drivers. They may not know what the problem is, but it starts them looking for it. 7. It is recommended you turn your headlights on during the daytime when there is poor visibility. This makes it easier, A, for others to see your car, B, for you to see, C, to see the edge of the road, D, to illuminate light-colored objects. Eight, if you have a flat tire when driving on a highway, it is recommended that you, A, stop with the flat tire on the pavement so you can more easily raise the car, B, Make sure your passengers stay in the car, out of the way. C. Place flares or warning triangles at least 200 feet and 300 feet behind the car. D. Stop quickly. The important thing is to save the tire. Segment 4. How to communicate with others. The last segment in this session concerns how you communicate with others through the use of your vehicle's horn, signal lights, and hand signals. What does this situation tell you? It should tell you that the car in the right lane is a good bet to change lanes in order to get by that truck. If you're intending to pass, you'd better make sure the driver sees you. That'll do it. Just a light tap to let him know you're there. You don't want to shake him up. That's what a horn is for, to let people know where you are. It isn't intended to tell people to get out of your way or give them a piece of your mind. Don't hesitate, however, to give a sharp blast when it's necessary. The most important thing in this case is to get a driver's immediate attention. For some strange reason, drivers don't use their horns enough as a warning device. The files are full of crashes 
that might have been prevented if a horn had been used in time. It's a good idea to make sure you can use your own horn quickly if you have to. Before we go on, let's discuss how this near disaster could have been prevented. That driver could have signaled before starting to come back into your lane. You could have moved into the left lane. If that wasn't possible, you could have given a blast on the horn to let him know you were there. If you ask the driver why he didn't signal, he'd probably say, because I didn't know you were there. A lot of people don't signal if they don't see anyone around. This is pretty silly. If the driver had seen you, he wouldn't have changed lanes in the first place. If you think about it, you'll realize it's the car you don't see that you really have to signal for. This leads to the first principle of signaling. Signal any time you intend to change position. This means any time you plan to change lanes. Turn at an intersection. Leave the highway. Or enter a roadway. Signal every time, whether you see another car or not. This way, you'll establish a signaling habit. Then, if your mind happens to be on other things, there's a good chance your hand will go for the signal anyway. Has this ever happened to you? You stop at a red light, the light turns green, you're all set to move out. All of a sudden, the guy ahead turns his left blinker on. You wait and wait and wait. By the time he makes his turn, the light's red and you wait some more. This leads to the second principle of signaling. Give your signal early. Give it as early as you can without causing confusion, but always give it several seconds before you make your move. Some drivers don't signal until they actually start to turn, change lanes, or pull onto the highway. What good is that? People can see what you're doing once you start doing it. The purpose of a signal is to give others advance notice of what you plan to do. Give them enough time to react. You plan to pull into that gas station just beyond the intersection. When should you give your signal? Now? If you do, the driver entering from the street on the right may think you plan to turn at the intersection and start across the street. In this case, delay your signal until you're actually in the intersection. Then the other driver knows that you don't plan to turn there. This leads to the last principle of signaling. Make sure you communicate your intentions clearly. This driver plans to pull into a gas station on this side of the intersection. However, the driver behind may interpret the blinker to mean he plans to turn at the intersection. The driver behind may not expect him to slow down at the gas station. If he should have to stop for a pedestrian or another car as he turns in, he might find someone in his trunk. A hand signal will make it clear that you plan to slow down or stop right here. Actually, a hand signal is a good signal to give any time you plan to slow down or stop where people wouldn't ordinarily expect you to stop. Your brake lights tell the driver behind you that you're slowing down, but they don't say how much or how quickly you're going to slow down. You're just coming over the top of a hill and see this. The driver behind can't see it and doesn't expect you to slow down. If your window's down, give a hand signal. If it isn't, you don't have time to roll it down. So, what do you do? In a situation like this, the best thing is to tap your brake pedal a few times quickly. That'll flash your brake lights and warn the driver that something's up. He may not know what it is, but he'll be prepared if you slow down suddenly. When you're traveling at fairly high speed, tapping your brake light is even better than a hand signal. It's more likely to catch the attention of any driver behind you. For example, this driver is going to slow way down in order to make the tight turn into that side road. If a driver behind isn't paying really close attention, he may not be prepared for it. Flashing the brake light will help put him on his toes. Earlier, we talked about the signs that some people give that tell you what they are going to do. One of these signs is the turn signal. What does this turn signal tell you about the other driver? He's planning to turn at that intersection. He's planning to turn somewhere. He's put his turn signal on.
Sometimes it is very difficult to read accurately the little signs that tell you what other drivers are about to do. Perhaps the driver is planning to turn at the intersection. Maybe he planned to turn somewhere, didn't, but forgot to cancel the turn signal. Unfortunately, all we can be sure of in this situation is that he's put his turn signal on. 9. You intend to turn into a driveway just after an intersection. When should you signal? A. Just before you enter the intersection. B. Just as you enter the intersection. C. At the driveway. D. As soon as you pass the preceding intersection. Ten, the best way to signal a message, trouble ahead in my lane, is to A, use left turn signal, B, turn on your headlights, C, give sharp blast of horn, D, flash your brake lights. Yeah, I'm out here on 80 and uh, trying to figure You out and a CB have a lot in common. Both of you can transmit a lot of different messages to other drivers, and you can both receive a lot of messages from other drivers. You also have one more thing in common. You both have to be on in order to work. Your receiver has to be on if you're going to pick up the signs by which other drivers tell you things. Your transmitter has to be on if you're going to remember to give those signs that tell other people where you are or what you're planning to do. But remember, there's one big difference between you and a CB. You can't turn yourself off and drive safely. You all have a nice day now. We will now review the questions. One, the correct answer is B. Signaling your intention through the use of horn, lights, or lane position helps other roadway users better understand what you intend to do and in turn indicate their intentions. In short, it is an exchange of information. Two, the correct answer is D. Vehicle turn signals and headlights, pedestrian age and action, or road surface and atmospheric conditions are all communication devices and should help drivers better understand what conditions or actions to anticipate. Three, the correct answer is D. Again, a person's age and appearance, for instance, a small child can be expected to react differently than an elderly person, an intoxicated individual may weave, a jogger wearing headphones, his or her position relating to the roadway, and whether they are facing or looking away from traffic are all clues to actions a driver may expect. Four, the correct answer is A. A yellow diamond-shaped sign with black lettering always indicates a potentially dangerous situation. Caution is called for. Five, the correct answer is B. A yield right-of-way sign means that a driver must slow, check for possible conflicts, and be prepared to stop if necessary. Six, the correct answer is C. The color of an arrow when used in conjunction with a traffic light has the same meaning as the traffic light. A green arrow means you may proceed if clear. Yellow, be prepared to stop. Red, stop. Seven, the correct answer is A. Research studies show that vehicles with their headlights on during the day are involved in approximately seven to 23% fewer